Katie King here, occupational therapist at Hetra, and it's time for another story time with the minis. Today we're gonna read The Horse Who Lived Upstairs. You ready for this, Blue? Okay. There once was a horse named Joey who was discontented. He was discontented because he didn't live in a red barn. With a weather vane on top like this. And he didn't live in a green meadow where he could run about and kick up his heels like this. Instead, he lived upstairs in a big brick building in New York City. Joey worked for Mr. Pulaski, who sold fruits and vegetables to city people. Joey pulled the vegetable wagon through the city streets. And in New York, there isn't room for barns or meadows. So every night, when Joey came home, he stepped out from the shafts of the wagon and into an elevator, and up he went to his stall on the fourth floor of the big brick building. It was a fine stall, and Joey was very comfortable there. He had plenty of oats to eat and plenty of fresh straw to lie on. He even had a window to look out of. But still, Joey was discontented. How I long to sip fresh water from a babbling brook, he often exclaimed. And then he would sniff discontentedly at the old bathtub near the elevator, which served him as a watering trough. It wasn't that he had to work hard. Mr. Pulaski was kind to him and brought him home at five o'clock every day. In the winter, Joey had a blanket to wear on his back to keep him warm. And in the summertime, Mr. Pulaski got him a hat to wear on his head to keep him cool. And every day he had many interesting adventures. Sometimes he met a policeman who gave him sugar. And sometimes ladies patted him on the nose and fed him carrots. He was introduced to the high bred horses who drew the handsome cabs along the plaza. He saw the children playing in the playgrounds and in the parks, but it made no difference to Joey. This is no life for a horse. He used to say to the Percheron who lived in the next stall to him, we city horses don't know what real living is. I want to move to the country and sleep in a red barn with a weather vane on top and kick up my heels in a green meadow. So happy he was when one day Mr. Pulaski said to him, Joey, I think I could sell more vegetables if I drove a truck. I will miss you, Joey, but you will like it on the farm where I'm going to send you. The next morning, a big motor van rolled up. Joey got inside and away he went through the country. Of course, he said goodbye to the Percheron. Goodbye, Joey, called his friend. I hope you will be contented on the farm. When Joey reached the country, sure enough, there was a barn with its weather vane and there was a meadow. This is the life, cried Joey to himself. But poor Joey, the barn was cold in the winter and hot in the summer. He didn't have a blanket and he didn't have a hat. And he had very little time to kick up his heels in the green meadow. For all day long, he pulled a plow through the earth. A plow is harder to pull than a wagon. And besides, the farmer worked from sunrise to sundown instead of the eight hours Joey's was used to. Sometimes they forgot to put fresh straw in his stall and nobody thought to give him sugar or carrots. There were plenty of children, but they climbed on his back and teased him when he wanted to eat. And instead of the Percheron, there was a cross old gray horse next to him who looked down his nose at Joey because Joey knew so little about farm life. One day when he wasn't pulling a plow because it was Sunday, Joey saw several people picnicking in the meadow. He decided to join them for they looked as if they came from the city and he thought they might have a lump of sugar in one of their pockets. When he reached the spot, they had gone for a walk, so he ate up their lunch. When he came back, they were very angry and Joey was shut up in his stall for the rest of the day. He didn't even have a window to look out of. 
He was lonely for his friends, the policemen and the ladies who patted him on the nose. He was lonely for the high-bred horses and all the interesting sights of the city. I don't think I belong in the country after all, sighed Joey. I'm now more discontented than ever. Next day, he heard the honk of a horn. He, locked, he looked from the door of the barn and whom should he see but Mr. Pulaski getting out of the truck. I have come for Joey, Mr. Pulaski told the farmer. I cannot get any more tires for my truck, so I think I will sell fruit and vegetables from my wagon again. Oh goodness, Joey was happy. He went back to the city with Mr. Pulaski and got into the elevator and up he went to the fourth floor and the big brick building. There was his stall and there was the window for him to look out of and there was the friendly Percheron. Welcome back, Joey, exclaimed the Percheron. I have missed you. The policeman has missed you. The lady customers have missed you. And so have the children in the playgrounds and parks. Tell me, how did you like the country? The country's all right for country animals, Joey said, but I guess I'm just a city horse at heart. And he was never discontented again. The end. Thanks for joining us with Storytime in the Minis. If you have any books you think the Minis would enjoy, send them to us. We'll see you next time.